Hey everyone, um, I had a rough night last night, which pretty much spirals into a rough day, um, and I did everything in my power to set myself up for a good week, and I pretty much, oh, sorry, I pretty much like rested this entire weekend. I didn't have any plans. I stayed in bed literally Friday, Saturday, and Sunday the whole day. I was in my bedroom and I kept my computer here in the living room on the couch so that I wouldn't be tempted to do like work and it didn't work. Um, I was rested yesterday and thinking, oh, t today's going to be a good start. I'm going to get my, my, uh, oh, oh sorry. Um, I'm going to get, like, so much stuff done and all the calls I got to make and everything. And, and, of course, I have a horrible night, a horrible pain night. I could not sleep. I was in so much pain. Oh, God, like, it was rough. And... It's those type of nights are just like, you know, I made it through, but if it wasn't for certain medications, I don't think I would have like th that's how strong it is. It's I know eventually it, the pain will simmer back to what it, my usual pain is, um, but when it's happening you're just like why why like it's god like almost i'm gonna get through it i'm gonna get through it like like you're i'm like coaching myself like you know okay it's gonna go away soon it's gonna calm down it's gonna calm down soon just you know be strong and and all this stuff and one thing that gets me through it is my heating pads if it wasn't for my heating pads I probably wouldn't be as positive as I am today. Now I would be, I'll still be positive, but um, I probably would have found something else. But my heating pads are my saviors. Like this right here is the best invention ever. Uh, we currently now at EDS United use it as a fundraising item. I have. Sorry, I can't stop yawning. I haven't slept yet, so I'm super tired. But, um, I, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, this. <laughs> this heating pad is awesome. So, um, there are a bunch of different brands and everything like that. But the repeat the heat ones I found are the best because they don't break open and destroy your clothing. So I pretty much just activated it and you see all the crystals forming the formation of these crystals release heat and in turn generate a heating pad these can also turn into cold packs if you put it in the fridge not the freezer like some people have done and then destroy the integrity of the pack you it's not water so if it if you put it in the fridge it will get as cold as it needs to get so um the heating pack is pretty much it gives me something else to feel i'm constantly in pain i have nerve damage and it's not fun it's constantly shooting off sometimes it gets stronger than other times but when i'm i can't sit still like i actually was hanging out with a friend the other day and they told me I was wiggly and they thought I was uh, I guess drunk or something like that because I'm constantly fidgeting after a certain after sitting still for a certain period of time I'm constantly moving if I don't have my heating pads to try and give me something else to feel something else to sen like some other sensation to focus on because it's a it's a it's like mental gymnastics dealing with chronic pain it's you're just constantly having to focus on something so in a cold room i focus on the heating pad and focusing on that will then like distract my mind from what else is going on so i don't go crazy essentially 
So like there are little tricks that chronic pain people uh, learn. There's also the you know the massaging that helps a lot. Um, it's just and I any other sensation essentially, especially when you're dealing with nerve nerve pain. Um, I was asked how I stay positive with um, with a life like this, with a body like this, and really, it's all about mindset and perspective. Uh, when I was younger, I didn't really have the same perspective that I do now, but um, I, when I'm going through the pain, I no longer ask for death. I know death is an inevitable. It's going to come when it comes and when it's my time to go. I shouldn't, I don't feel like I should be asking for it anymore. I used to ask for it a lot and it didn't come. So I know it's going to come when I'm, when it's my time. So I no longer uh, be like, oh, please let it just end now. I don't do that anymore. I now focus on what I have and what I have that's making my situation better. The I could just imagine this body, but without the roof over my head, without the heat warming up this house, without like my, my soft blankie, you know, without my pillows cushioning my back because um, I got a lot of spine problems too, without my knee brace f to be able to walk, um, without my computer to be able to talk to, without the heating pads, that, that right there is just, if I didn't have my heating pads, I don't know what I would do with myself. And I, I have the electric pad that you plug, plug in, but that takes like 10 minutes to warm up. It's not instant. And then it shuts off in 60 seconds, in 60 minutes. And so it, warm it takes a, about a while to warm up and then it gets hot and then it starts calming down again and that's typically good for healthy people but I need something instantly hot to try and give me something else to focus on so that I can get what I need to do done it to be productive um, of course everything has its limits and um this also cools down and when it cools down i need to i grab another one and activate it and just keep it cycling through to try until i i'm done when i'm done don't talk like you can't there's no focusing until i get them re um i guess restarted or like uh where they go back to liquid state so i have to boil them essentially in order to dissolve the liquid in order to dissolve the the crystals and so um i pretty much don't function without my heating pads but oh it's all about oh um perspective really it's all about just being grateful for what you have i could just imagine how horrible it would be to be homeless to not have a place to lay my head that i can call my own or you know like a safe place i i can just imagine not having like the clothes to keep me warm or the ability these heating pads like so every little thing that you have you have to pretty much amplify it you have to amplify the little things when i'm eating something that's like delicious that right there i amplify it i amplify it in my mind to the point where when it's gone it's still making me happy the fact that i was able to experience it that's how i get through my life i really focus on the little things and uh, a lot of people don't really even realize what the little things are or how amazing they are. So, 
sorry I cannot stop yawning um but uh what I was saying was essentially that's how I get through that's how I stay positive that's how I stay smiling I'm really not feeling good right now but it's not gonna stop me from smiling you know like I I'm still can have a good conversation this last night I there was no talking to me because um I was just in too much pain I was making like just I just make my weird noises and you know trying to get through it when it gets to that level there's like there's no ability to talk I don't really have the ability to breathe right it's it's not a fun experience and even those moments make these moments more tolerable because I know it can get worse the pain that I feel right now in my legs is at least it's not that what I felt last night and I know it can get worse I know the pain can get worse so I'm just pretty much happy that right now I can hold a conversation I can talk I can kind of pretend like I'm okay <laughs> um, if if my mom was to come by or something I'd be like hey I'm good and she'll be like no you're not and I'll I can at least put on a smile you know and that's that's what makes me able to get through the chronic pain days when it gets really really bad I need to go into isolation I don't like the fact that I can't hide you know I can't hide behind a smile or I can't like like people can see it to see the pain I don't want anyone to see me in pain I that's like my private one-on-one -on -one moments with myself and my body and so um, I retract I try for no one to see me like that and I don't feel like it's I don't I don't feel like it's necessary for anyone to really see me like that I know um, a lot of people kind of suck it up and be like no I, I'm going to suffer in the presence of my family so that they know what I have to go through and at this point the your loved ones don't need to necessarily see it to know that you're not well the people that are in your lives that are true support systems they can tell they can tell when it's you're not right or you know you're a little off like when you're going when I, when you're in your highest extreme pain it's easier for me at least to go through it by myself when I'm not around anyone that way I can scream and no one's running in are you okay are you okay and you're just like obviously not you know but like they obviously they want to do something for you they want uh, what can I do what can I do to make it better nothing I have to write it out this is my life this is my body and having to explain that makes you feel it's it's a it brings you down you know like for me I know I need to I need to not have to like be in that situation I don't want someone asking me what they can do for me because they can't do anything and then what to force them to have to watch me go through some you know something that obviously is very unpleasant and they can't do anything about it but then they don't want to leave because then they feel like they're abandoning you so I, it's just a bad situation for everyone I make it known that I when I'm going through that please let me just get through it let me just be on my own and it, it's all about communication a lot of people they they allow themselves to be in uncomfortable situations or they allow themselves that like they just they just uh, don't allow themselves the privacy that they really need when they need it because they don't know how to communicate they don't they're they're thinking well if they watch me go through this then they're going to see what I go through they'll see the pain but it's then they're gonna be oh what can I do what can I do you know a lot of people don't 
they'll be like, then, like, when they see me now, if you saw me last night versus now, you'd be like, oh, so you're feeling a lot better, aren't you? It looks like you're doing good. And that even that is is frustrating because no, I'm not actually. I, I'm still in pain. It's just, I it's the levels have gone down down enough to where I can I can interact now I can you know I can talk I can sit in front of you and I'm not pushing you out the door to try and get my privacy so that I could scream and cringe and do what I need to do to get through this so it's it's easier to be your own best friend when you have a body like this and not necessarily to kind of seek out other people's approvals or um, or their sympathy or empathy or any of that to um, to just be yourself and I know that's that's hard that's also hard when you haven't gotten to the point where you've accepted your condition that's another thing I can do this I can be happy and be okay alone going through this because I've accepted it I've accepted that I will always be in pain I'm this is my this is my life this is the body that I have and this is what I need to go through in order to be the best person that I can be and I've come to that realization and life has taught me that um, but a lot of times when you don't accept it and you're just like we're gonna find a cure it's just a matter of time I don't have to accept this this is not my body even when you remember like some people they don't like for me I don't remember what it feels like to not be in pain I don't feel like I don't know what it feels to I guess be normal but um I don't remember if I was ever not in pain because I remember being in pain when I was a kid so I I can't I can't recall when this wasn't my reality but some people they (sighs) Sorry, they um. They remember when they were okay, like, like when fibromyalgia hits or something triggers a condition, or sometimes with EDS you're okay and then you dislocated a joint that you really, you know, didn't expect to dislocate and then that's when everything kind of goes downhill. Um, but those people that remember kind of not being in pain and then their whole lives are taken away from them they have to learn to adjust they have to learn to accept their new selves and the fact that they might not ever be normal or their version of normal again when you accept your body for what it is and kind of your journey as well this is now the new me this is okay kind of take it take it as it comes essentially like each symptom is always a new surprise like okay so now i have to figure out how to live with this symptom or okay now you know this new medication regimen like it's a constant adjusting but it also teaches you strength It really does. You learn things that you would have never learned otherwise. You learn about people that you never would have learned otherwise. And it's, it's quite a lesson. It really is. It's something that opens up your eyes. And I, at this point in my life, if you would have asked me younger before I got sick, I would have been like, I wish I never was born with this. I hate this body. But now, I wouldn't change anything. Even after last night, I still wouldn't change anything. And I know 
it must sound crazy to a lot of people with similar conditions or the same conditions and the healthy people. But um, that's the truth. That's my reality. I, I wouldn't really change my journey. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go back and change anything because it's made me who I am at this very moment. And I feel so awake. I feel like I have acquired so much strength to be able to keep my mind focused and still live in this body it's an accomplishment well, i'm going to call it a night i'm gonna try and get some rest because i had a long day and an even longer night last night and i'm hoping tonight is gonna be a little bit more peaceful for me as always stay strong stay connected